So I first thought of this project uh, when the idea of the referendum on Britain's membership of the EU was first being floated in 2013. And I thought, I want to do a project that is about um, how theatre might encourage intercultural dialogue. I started to look at how British theatre dealt with translation and uh, translation practices in the UK. And first thing I discovered was that very few translations were actually being produced. Only 3% of plays that are put on every year in the UK are originally written in language other than English. So then I started to look at um, how the plays that were being produced in translation were actually being translated. And I realised that there was a lot of concealing of difference um, in order to adapt those differences so that audiences wouldn't feel challenged by them. I've always conceived of the theatre as a place where you go to encounter other worlds and invent new worlds. So I like being challenged at the theatre and I realised that those kinds of translations weren't really doing it for me. And I came across a theorist called Lawrence Venuti who in the 1990s started to theorise um, foreignization. Essentially, Venuti says that translation is a domesticating practice. What that means is that uh, with translation you take something that is foreign and you turn it into something that is familiar, something that people can access. In that process, uh, what happens is that most of the cultural differences of that source text um, are obliterated. So Venuti asks, what is the politics and what is the ethics of this practice of domestication and how can we counteract this? So this is precisely where foreignization comes into play. Then I realised that Venuti doesn't really talk about theatre, he talks about novels, short stories, but none of his examples are drawn from theatre practice. So I wanted to reassess his theories for the stage um, from the point of view of theatre practice. So we, that's where I got the idea of, uh, of gathering a number of theatre makers in one room to think what foreignization means for the stage. So we chose to work with uh, contemporary plays, plays written in the past 10 years, and we chose to work with plays originally written in Spanish, French and Polish because those are the three most widely spoken um, European languages in the UK. We've ended up with uh, three texts whose authors are all from migrant backgrounds or whose authors are already in a state um, of otherness in relation to the dominant cultures in which they live and write. The first author is Denise Desperu. She was born in Uruguay but lives in Madrid and she uh, writes and works extensively both in Europe and in Latin America. Ternura Negra, Black Tenderness, is a um, naturalist uh, but actually a magical realist, dark comedy in which supernatural events occur. And the premise is that there's a rehearsal happening via Skype and the ghost of Mary Stewart ends up possessing the actress in Madrid via Skype. Marine Diaye is a half French, half Senegalese author who very much problematizes her relationship with, with France and with Frenchness in her work and who has recently relocated to Berlin. Les Serpents, The Snakes, it's a very tense, very, very cold play, very literary in language. There are three women uh, speaking outside a house and inside the house is a man and a terrible mystery or a terrible trauma. The audience never really understands how the relationships between the characters work. And Piotr Peter Lachmann um, has two names, a German name and a Polish name because he was born a German and raised a Pole because the borders changed in the city in which he was born in Gliwice, Gliwice. Hamlet Gliwicki, translated as Gliwice Hamlet, is a rewrite of Hamlet, a completely fragmented, post-dramatic text, uh, a text that moves across time and space and also uses a lot of video. It's a meditation on theatre, a meditation on technology, also a meditation on Hamlet, and spun through this is uh, Lachmann's own biographical tale through the 20th century as 
someone whose identity is constantly shifting. Our research questions were really simple. What constitutes a foreignizing approach to theatre translation? And can the same approach be applied to different kinds of texts? And secondly, what is a foreignizing approach to performance? Um, so what is a foreignized performance? And what effect does foreignization have on things like acting, mise-en-scene and character? A, a good translation generally is considered to be a translation which reads like it was written, written in the target language. So it reads like it was written in English in this case. So that's always been the, the goal in many respects for me. and always, It's always been the expectation uh, of the translations that I've written. Um, and this is very different. This is very different because in this case, um, we don't want it to sound written like, uh, like it was written in English originally. It needs to, there needs to be some reflection um, on its uh, Spanish origin. Venuti writes about this, and I think it's very true, that translations need often to be more conservative than the literature, because there's a sense that if it's doing something weird, it must be a bad translation. One of the first things that I decided was try to try to retain the source syntax of the Spanish uh, quite closely. Um, because often the way in which we structure a sentence is uh, reflecting the thought process. So if we were trying to identify something of the Spanish uh, in the English, I thought it was important that we try to retain the way in which thought is structured in Spanish, uh, transposed onto the English. Uh, so ordinarily I'd probably have rewritten sentences a, a little bit more, I would have been more direct with the English. Um, and instead I've tried to retain these long run-on sentences uh, with sub-clauses, with uh, lots of prepositional phrases, and Latinate sentence structures where the verb often comes later than we're used to in English. Another thing we found difficult were uh, these, these colloquial expressions or phrasal verbs. For example, there was a, a wor um, an expression in Polish which literally translates to walk over corpses. Mm. Um, and in Polish it, it's just understood as um, just do something at any cost whatsoever. So if you use it in Polish, because this metaphor is already dead and people don't mm. associate it necessarily with the image, mm -hmm. it doesn't maybe uh, necessarily strike the reader as, as that strange, but at the same time, Lachman activates that, that mm. metaphor and makes it alive. And so we also had to introduce it um, in a way that would both give the meaning of, of the expression, mm -hmm. get something at any cost, but then also um, the sense of the um, the dead that comes mm -hmm. with it. And in, in this case in particular, we've decided just to keep that. I'm dispensed! I'm dispensed! Ghost! Ghost! Moon shoes, dig! My sleepwalker always you standing by me. Only at night, midnight, I'm dancing on the roof. My sweet fella! I walk over corpses. They're cold bellies. An expression like voi volando. Um, idiomatically, I mean, there's several options. I'll be there in a flash. Um, I'm on my way. And instead, I've tried to retain, I've, uh, perhaps quite literally, but this notion of flying. I'm going to fly to you. There are all these abstractions. We talked about this in rehearsal today with the on va faire ceci, on cela, whatever, where if you were to render it in English, you would render it you. But I thought, no, this play has a real level of impersonality. And it's important to maintain that. Um, there are moments when Piotr is very interested in wordplay, and there are other moments where he enjoys the texture of language. He likes certain kinds of sounds. I think he's very influenced by Shakespeare, maybe in this way. Um, there was a, a wonderful thing he says right at the beginning about um, Chepian Chepian, about this idea that um, there's a kind of suffering that you experience in August. So I guess the direct translation would be August suffering, but that doesn't give that same lovely sound that we get in the Polish. So we translated it as summer suffering to have the lovely sibilance in it. Mm -hmm. So it was almost as if I set aside the theories, but they were always there sort of allowing me to take the bolder decision, kind of giving me license to take the bolder decision, which was to maintain the strangeness and also the strangeness of Ndiaye's language because it is strange. It is strange in French as well. And so I allowed 
for the French to carry the language in a way. You could very well have, I don't know, found odd and made it felt that your son in love with a girl like that, of that sort, so, so not very pleasant to look at and never having anything to say anything about anything. And what's more, judging it necessary, this girl, to present her to you as his wife, you could have laughed at it. Because where I'm from, one laughs at such disparities. I think what's been different in this process um, has been starting at the beginning with uh, an ideological idea and then trying to marry that with, with my, my normal process of unpicking a text and trying to bring it to life. Um, so that has influenced the decision making instead of what I suppose would normally influence the decision making, which is what effect I want to create for an audience. We thought about foreignization before we had the actors in the room, so it was something that affected casting that was part of discussions with the, with the translators and with the creative leaders. Today was totally about like, how do we put this thing on stage? So theory completely goes out of the window and the practicality of, of staging it comes to the fore. Because I think that we made very strong choices through the casting, for instance. I mean, the fact that it's black British Zimbabwean actors doing this Polish play, uh, that that would be the case. Discovering what my tendency is, and my tendency is to, to not foreignize, but to contextualize, to make accessible, to give audiences ways of connecting with a text and with a, with a story. And what's been really interesting in terms of this idea of foreignized, a foreignized mise-en-scene is going, okay, what if, that, what if you resist that for a little bit? But, but, it, but it has been, it's been quite uh, freeing to just go, okay, how, how, how do we look at this with different eyes and that foreignized look and how do we not try and explain the other but just simply see what the other is? We want the audience to feel that this is foreignized, that this is not domesticated, it's not super familiar, but then how do we make that, how do we make that feel like that without it feeling actually like just that the play doesn't work? Um, because my experience, I imagine, as an audience member of something that, that jars is that I would think, this feels like it's not, it's not working, it's not coherent. Um, and so that's going against all of, all of my instincts as a, as a practitioner. Yeah, I think it's an interesting strategy. I think it's definitely something, so I'm going to be directing, hopefully, uh, a foreign work, a Uruguayan play in, later on in the year and I've been translating it, and I will go back to my translation and see what I, whether I want to change anything with this new approach or with a new, an approach that is new to me. So, absolutely, I, I found it fascinating. I will take this into my work. I think we all agree that foreignization is meant to enable a good theatre production. It's like this thing that they say about, you know, Brecht and Verfremdung's effect being translated as alienation device. And people are saying, well, that's a mistranslation because Brecht's intention was never to alienate his audience. He wanted to make strange. But the making strange is, a, is an educational technique within a theatre performance that is still meant to be aesthetically compelling. And so I think that foreignization is also a, a theatre technique that is meant to be theatrically compelling. This process and having Kalina as a translator in the room, having you know the academics in the room looking and focusing on a completely different way of looking at it, we found that it was a very difficult process um, and one that was discomforting, but it's been yeah, I think it's been a real eye-opener. To love is to constantly unlive. Lie! I don't believe you. Is it possible that a yogi tea would communicate a message like that? You're making it up. Look, read it. What does it say here? Love is to live for the other. To live for the other. Well, there you go. That's just what I just said. Oh, 
Whoever lives for someone else is unliving for themselves. To sum up, love is constantly unliving. You suffer a lot, don't you, Paloma? Yeah, some parts of the script we've, we've, we've encountered um, difficulties. It doesn't seem the na naturally the way I would maybe say things. So what I've found that is if I, so, if I try and roll with it to, to make the point, then it seems to be a character choice that she, that is the way she speaks. She's kind of passionate, she, she speaks quite fast, she's got a lot of energy. It's just been really great to work on a text that you wouldn't work on otherwise. So, you know, working in British theatre, you wouldn't necessarily have such a progressive, modern, postmodern, exciting piece of work that you'd get to be in the process of translating it or transposing it or foreignizing it. It's a different culture, different references, different points of view, and we've had to come to it. Normally, uh, I, plays come to me because I am what they're looking for in the play. You know, I, I've been foreignized in the process. I've had to journey towards it, and I've also had to find to find what it means. I think each production of a play sets up a set of rules um, for that world, and you, you, you the the audience are invited in to play along with the game and each production chooses the rules. And the more interesting and fun the rules, the more interesting and fun the production. And so yesterday we began, I began floating the idea of uh, what are the rules of translation land or, or of foreignized translation land. Like, uh, and the more specific we can be with the rules, the more fun we can have in it. Yeah, in a way it does make me think more and more how interesting it is to retain um, whether it's ambiguity within the text or mysteries within the text or things that are not movable within the text and not necessarily have to transpose them or cut them or change them. For me the biggest difference between this experience and the, my other experiences of making contemporary British theatre is I mean, maybe it's the specificity of this project, but there was no pretext to why are you here? I wasn't answering the question of, well, why is she black? Are we acknowledging that she's black? You know, all those other stuff that you have to deal with as an actor of colour all the time, you know. This text that we've been given, the translation, is fluid. It's got weird, disjointed things. It's got things that are uncomfortable to say. They don't, the rhythm of it's very different. It's not familiar. It doesn't feel familiar. Admitting, recognising, as So often English is seen as the language of power, you know? Yeah. And so... Trans so how do we deal with this play within yeah, a language Yeah, within that power. context. Yeah. And, you know, maybe there's a lot of people at the moment who see themselves as being British, as coming from a place of immense Superior power. Origin, but it's yeah. like, no, there's a lot of people in this world whose culture and history and intelligence is so, so rich and so powerful. The natural instinct in it uh, naturalist rehearsal room is to make the characters as familiar, lifelike, fluent as possible. So I guess with being presented with the foreignized text, we can either, the choices it seemed to be, were either to try and hide the foreignization with our natural instincts or to um, highlight the foreignization and make a point of the maybe something Brechtian. Um, or somewhere in the middle, which is translation land, where like we find what what a kind of third response to that might be. Foreignization, I think, to me, seems to say, well, it's a given that the audience won't understand everything. So therefore, theatrically, what are we going to do about it? Which is a better question. Friendliness is always the best bandage with which to wrap our wounds. That's it for me. I assure you there is no smoke here. If you see me badly, then it must be a transmission problem with Skype. In, in, in fact, I see you two quite badly. The rapid breath of the children on their chairs. I could not hear it because the fridge was rumbling. I knew he was there, that he was watching me. I knew that one second of reverie would sign my consummation. I will give a demonstration as an example, and then I will ask questions. I will ask for applications. It is really worth it. It is worth not to be. 
So as I said, with this project, I was interested in exploring models for cultural interaction. And if I can be allowed to generalize a little bit, the dominant model of theatre translation in the UK goes a bit like this. You, the foreign play, are allowed amongst us, are allowed to come and visit us um, and stay with us only if you change yourself and become like us. Only then we can welcome you and we'll be interested in you and we won't be feel threatened by you. It's a model we know as integration. So the play has to be integrated into the receiving culture. Whereas a foreignized model of cultural interaction is slightly different. It says, you, the foreign play, uh, I'm interested in you uh, as a receiving culture. And in order to know you and to know your cultural difference, I know that I have to shift my position. I know that I have to come towards you. You'll have to come towards me, but I'll have to come towards you. So we'll meet halfway and we'll influence one another and we'll end up with something new. So this model of cultural interaction is what anthropologists call creolization. And what this means is that you have two entities that come together in an open way and influence one another and um, get to know one another um, in a way that feels fair.